afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God who has showed us, who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. But now it's made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to life through the gospel, whereunto I am appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this call, for, for which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am pers and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word. I, I, as I look at that passage of scripture, verse 12, the last part of it, the Apostle Paul had struggles as much as or more than most people. He had some serious things that he had to deal with in his life. Amen. Uh, but, you know, shipwrecked, beaten, stoned, left for dead. I mean, it, it, it was a situation we talked about uh, of this one time in Bible class here on Sunday morning in the adult class. Uh, as he was getting ready, I believe it was Corinth that he was about to go into. I'm satisfied, Sister Kathy, that if that been me, and as many times as I'd been, as Paul had been beaten, stoned, and and, and, and cast out of the city, uh, I would have been afraid. And I, I, I guess he had a, some concern too. But the Lord dealt with him right. and told him to go on into the city, right. that God was going to be with him, and God was going to help him, gave him some Gave him some strength and some comfort. You see, and, and salvation, God, would you help this preacher tonight, does not produce a spirit of fear. It just don't. If, if we get a spirit of fear and a spirit of doubt upon us, it didn't come from God. Sometimes we get to looking out for ourselves and, for, and forget that it's God that's looking out for us. Right. We get to looking out for ourselves and how we're going to take care of this, how we're going to handle that, how we're going to take care of something else. You know, in spite of all that Paul went through, he still had a joyful, happy experience in the Lord. Right. Yes. Help me preach. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. God don't give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. Yeah. Well, amen. I guess I need a little more help on the sound mind. Praise yeah. God. But aren't you glad of the Lord tonight that he can help us over and beyond anything that can be done in this life. Amen. We may have to bear reproach. Paul did. We may have to bear persecution. Paul did. We may even have to die for this cause. History said Paul did. Amen. But we'll always have the support of God behind us. Hallelujah. In their time of trouble. And I believe that we'll have the smile of God. Amen. Upon us if we have to die for this cause. Well, hallelujah. And I was studying on this and I was thinking, brothers, of people that I know of, didn't know personally, but read their stories, read their accounts of persecution and some of the things that they went through, 
even death for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. Right. Where Raymond loved them didn't know the depths of the spiritual things the way we understand them. Some of them were of the Baptist faith and Methodist faith and uh, uh, one in, in particular that comes to mind was uh, the Episcopalian belief, Episcopal, whatever you say that, and, and, and went through terrible, terrible, terrible persecution in long prison terms. Now, they, and again, they didn't understand the gospel like we do, the depths of the spirit. Are you with me just a few minutes tonight? Oh, the depths of the gospel the way we do, uh, 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 praying through till we speak in other tongues as the spirit gives their utterance and seek divine healings the way many of us have. Yeah. But yet, when it comes to the test, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Uh, 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 yes, I do. Amen. Because all you've got to do is just recount, recant that and, and, and say that you no longer believe that. You won't preach that anymore. And we'll let you out of jail. But they wouldn't do that. Right. Amen. Don't you know that God stood by them? Yeah. Even though they might not have understood the whole gospel, God still stood by them. Right. I read accounts where some of those men, amen, said that angels even come and stood by and comforted them. Amen. I'm telling you, regardless tonight of what we suffer, regardless of what we endure, yeah. amen, we have the comfort of God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm about to feel the glory. Amen. We have the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Coming to us and helping us. Right. Yeah. Delivering us. Yeah. Well, hallelujah. One reason Paul was so sure of it is he said, I know in whom I have believed. I know. I'm positive of this. There's no doubt about it. Hallelujah. Well, look what kind of a, an experience that Paul had. Amen. When he was converted, my goodness. Amen. Being struck down by light and Jesus Christ himself speaking to him and, 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 and uh, him being blind and then going to Damascus and had God have somebody else on the other side waiting, uh, on the other end waiting to meet him and pray for him and get him prayed through the baptism? My, look what an experience. Well, if we stop to think, we've had a great experience ourselves. God took the time to knock at your heart's door when he, you, he could have just simply let you go on your own. Yes. But he took the time to knock on your heart's door. Right. Yeah. He took the time to turn you around. He took the time to turn me around. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, some of us, all of you may not feel that way, but some of us, you realize I said us, can be a little hard-headed at times. After God turned us around the first time and got us on the right track, and then we just pick it up and say, okay, Lord, I know how it's done now, and just keep right on going and right in our own way. There have been times after we've been saved that God's had to get a hold of us and turn us around and get us going in the right direction. Amen. And we can recount time and time again the time that God has come to us and helped us. And so, no, we might not have had the specific call like Apostle Paul did, but neither did Peter. The Lord just simply walks up to where Peter's at and fishing and said, follow me and I'm going to make you a fisher of men. He didn't have this great big experience the way Paul did. Right. Right. Come on, Jim. So we can put ourselves in the category of Peter. He come and knocked on our shoulder one day and said, follow me. Hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Paul knew. And I'm telling you tonight, we know in whom we believe. And if we know in whom we believe, amen, then there's nothing that can, well, I'm telling you, there's nothing that God can't do for us. Oh, God. That's it. He will 
will do it. Yes, I'm telling you, when the scripture says that if we delight ourselves in the Lord, he will give us the desires of our heart. You think God's going to lie on any portion of his scripture? No. I'm telling you, I'm beginning to feel just a little bit numb with that one. Well, hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. I thought I was too tired to preach, but I'm beginning to feel a little bit something to get a hold of. Him, Lord. Him, Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Absolutely sure of his standing with God. I can go back over last year in my life and the times whenever I just didn't know. I just wasn't sure. I was sure about God. I just wasn't sure about me. I mean, the devil's a devil. And then God I'm, 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 can, can I just testify a little bit? I was so troubled. And I said to my wife, I said, would you call Sister Peters? Sister Bluey, she, she, she did. Sister Bluey said, well, I'm going to pray for him. She comes back and calls back, if I'm not mistaken. And she said, tell him that I felt good at praying for him, and the Spirit spoke and said, I'm a God in him. And then, I, Brother Raymond, I got to thinking of all the visions and the dreams that the Lord had given me. Amen. And how I could watch each one of them come to pass. You know, and while I was going through that difficult time, hey amen, I didn't mean to preach on this tonight, but I just feel like talking to it. While I was going through that difficult time, Brother George Souls come down in the last stages of his uh, of this cancer that he had. You know, it was in his lungs and all spread all through him, and finally got up in his brain, and it killed him. But he went five or six years there, and the doctors tell him you need to take uh, 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 treatments and stuff. And he said, no, I'm not. I'm just going to live as long as the Lord's going to let me. And I'm going to preach until he takes me home. And he done that. But I, I didn't know that Brother Souls was that bad. I was thinking, you know, as good as he's doing, he's going to come on out of this. But the Lord gave me a dream. And I was at his church. I wasn't there to preach. I was just there. And I was sitting in the back of his church, and I was sitting back there, and the Holy Ghost came down on me. Amen. And, and, and I began to speak in tongues in my dream, and I was feeling so good. But I looked at the front, and there was no pulpit there, no place to preach. Yeah. Amen. And, and, and I was disturbed, you know, with all that was going through. And all I'm talking about, I'm sure... But where I stand tonight are you. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. And all the while I'm thinking when I wake up, Lord, I didn't see a pulpit. And I'm not real sure about things. Are you through with me, Lord? Is it time for me to go on preaching? Or is it time for me to just go ahead and retire? Amen. And I'm thinking all these things. And then I get a hold of Brother George. And I said, Brother George, I preached for you last time. And now I want you to come and preach for us. He said, Brother Sparks, I won't be able to travel anymore. I'm not even able to preach at my church now. They've just given me two or three weeks to live. You see, God had showed me in that dream, amen, that God was still going to hold me a while, amen, bless me, and let me feel the presence of God. But Brother George, he was going to take him on. I'm telling you, I feel like preaching to us here a few minutes. God can show us and establish us Assemble us and keep us tonight, but we've got to make sure, amen, that we're holding on and committed to God. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Well, hallelujah. 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 Paul committed his soul to Christ. 
committed his soul to Christ that he might save him. And he did. Committed his soul to Christ that Christ would sanctify him. And he did. Yes. Now, as far as the, as the Hebrew, uh, the Jewish law was concerned, Paul, Paul was as sanctified outwardly as anybody could be sanctified. I was talking to some Amish carpenters today. I don't want to much like to stand around on the job, but the guy asked me a few questions from Raymond, and I took the liberty of answering. Amen. You know, they're not the only ones who live, live separated from the world. We do too. That's right. I mean, yeah. Amen. When I got through telling him, you know, there's some things that I don't do, some things that my wife don't do, places we don't go, yeah. things that we don't watch. He couldn't believe it. Amen. You know, and I knew, I knew that, that, that they don't have church houses, that they hold their worship services in their living rooms at home. And I said, do you know, I, I, I remember a day when we didn't very rarely, did we very rarely go to a church house. We went to a lot of homes and had churches in home. You did? Amen. I said, one thing about it, we had church. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord was there. Amen. Because we was in the man's living room. He was paying the bills. Amen. And I'm not saying this about us, but I don't think we got nobody here trying to raise up and be the church boss. Amen. Can you help me here? But I said, well, a lot of times in church, amen, you have somebody raise up and won't be the church boss and won't tell the preacher when and how and all this kind of stuff. Amen. And I said, you don't have that at home, in the home. But I said, we got a good church. God's a blessing us. And we believe we've been separated from the world. I said, do you believe you do? we don't even go to ball games? Amen. But I'm telling you tonight, it's, it, it's over and beyond the outward sanctification. Right. Paul had to be sanctified down on the inside. Right. He had to understand yeah. what the love of God is. Right. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. And I would to God today that we'd go back to the altar again and again and again to where we can feel the love of God. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, the brother mentioned a few minutes ago about you can feel them bad spirits. Yes. You ever been have people just come back and eyeball you? When you start that, you better watch that one and pray for it. That's right. Yes. He's fixing to get you if he gets a chance. That's right. When you stand back, start eyeballing you, they're jealous of you over something. Amen. Come on now, help me here a few minutes. Yeah. Kind of keep your eye on that one and be praying for him. Amen. Because if he gets a chance, he'll lay it to you. Amen. Paul understood all that. Yeah. Amen. Of all the things that he had done, yeah. there was people that were just waiting to get a hold of that man, just waiting to try to end his life. Waiting, well, you know, when we got him in jail, we're going to take care of him. Paul preached in jail. He still got people saved in jail. While he was in jail, at Rome's expense, he wrote letters to the churches. Yeah. Hey, whoo, hallelujah. Yeah. I at Rome's expense. Well, yeah. glory to God. Oh. Amen. God still helping his people. Yes, he committed himself that God would save him, sanctify him, baptize yeah. him with the power yes, of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I've said this numerous times. Praise the Lamb of God. Help me, Lord, here a few minutes. Amen. We'll pray through till we speak in other tongues and we feel like I got it. You did. You got baptized in the Holy Ghost and you got the tongues. Why don't we stay on the altar until we receive the power that goes with the tongues? Hallelujah. If He's able and He is, and he'll sanctify us, and he does. He filled with the Holy Ghost, and he does. Yes. Amen. He'll give us the desires of our heart, and we delight ourselves in him. Yes. Then he'll give us the power. Yeah. Well, glory. Oh, Hallelujah. Yes. Paul devoted all to Christ. Yes, God. He counted everything lost. Nothing. There was nothing for Christ's sake. Hallelujah. He gained the greater. By losing the things of the world. You ever sit down and stop sometimes and just think? That's not a good idea. But stop and think sometimes of the things that perhaps you've given up. And you might do better 
if you've done this, 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 I have. And then I've also stopped and thought of the things that God added to me because of the things that I gave up. Some of my friends, I was raised in an independent church just like most of us here, but I went to an organized church for a little while. And the pastor tried to get me to stay. And for a while, I got to thinking, I could have got out of the factory a long time before I did. I could have got in a church with a salary. And you, you people have given me that here. But it still works. Yeah. But I got to think about all that. God just simply didn't want me there. No. And all the things that I gave up, and the devil come back if you just stay with it. Stay with it. Would have went worldly when the rest of them did. Come on now. No, well, I, 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 that, that makes people uncomfortable. But I'm here to tell us tonight, worldliness is not right. No. Right. 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 That's right. Amen. Come on, come on. Paul, I mean, the, uh, when the John said it, love not the things of the world, Love not the world, neither the things of the world. Right. Don't he say it like that? The world and the things of the world. Right. Yeah. You know, the I'm talking about a joyful experience. I hope I'm not losing you tonight. Oh, yeah. A joyful experience. You know, a lot of times we, we, we run up against obstacles and we blame this for our problem and that for our problem and something else for our problem. But it's things. Yeah. That's the biggest obstacle. Right. Things. Things. Help me here if you know that. That's it, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Paul had, great, had gained the greater. I got thinking the other day. I want to tell you, Mr. Kennedy was on target. Sister Esther has been dealing with it. Been under it. I was praying yesterday. And I called her. I, I usually I don't fool with my phone when I'm working because it's just a bad habit. Wasting somebody's time. They're paying you to work, not fool around on the telephone. But I picked, I got my phone out of my pocket and I called her and she had been crying. And I said, Lord, last year it was me struggling and this year it's her struggling. And all the time she said, How long, Lord? When? Hey, Amen. I'm going to tell you today, tonight, folks, God just simply wants us to trust Him. Right. Yes. Don't turn loose. Trust him. Right. Praise God. I feel the presence of the Lord coming here, strengthening me. The shipwreck. But before the shipwreck, storm. Days without even seeing the sun. Can you imagine such a storm? And for whatever reason, God kept the ship upright. Paul was on it, that's why. And God said, you're going to Rome. And then when the ship wrecked and crashed, everybody made it safely to shore because right. God said, right. how long, Paul? How long, God? How long? Well, the angel told him what to do, but he still didn't tell him how long. And he gets on the shore, and a bunch of people, they're just heathens. That's what barbarous people are. They're just heathens. Right. 
and it's cold, and they're getting sticks for the fire, and and and, and, and they're doing them the best they can. And Paul, of all things, all things, God brings him through the storm, brings him through the shipwreck, gets him on dry ground, or gets him on ground. It's still cold and rainy. Hey, Amen. Gets him on the ground, and he gathers sticks. And a snake bites him. How long, Lord? How long? Amen. I feel like telling us tonight, let's shake that serpent off in the fire. Amen. And still have a joyful experience for the glory of God. Woo! Well, praise the Lord. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Paul was persuaded. Persuaded because he knew that God was able to keep him. That's what I read right here in his word. Hallelujah. For I am, I am persuaded that he able, is able to keep that which I have committed unto him. I've got my soul in your hands, Lord. I've got my ministry in your hands, Lord. For the bread, we've got our family in his hands. Yes. Right. Yes. Sometimes we need to go back sing them little children's songs. Right. Sometimes Marcia does here to us. Sister Marcia does here to us. Yeah. She'll get up and sing them little children's right. songs back to us. Get her mind yeah. focused back on the simple things. Right. Rather than all the complex things. Sometimes we just need to sing that little, those little children's song. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. I'm not trying to be funny tonight. But to say that part of it, he's got the little bitty baby in his hands. If well, I can look over at my sweetheart and I can say he's got me and you, baby, in his hands. That's right. Come on now. Yeah. On? Hallelujah. He's got us in his hands. Amen. Amen. And we believe in God tonight and we've committed it to him. Oh. Amen. He's there. And he's going to keep us tonight. We can still have the joy of the Lord. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul Hallelujah. knew that God was going to keep him. He was persuaded. Yes. Persuaded. I mean, how much more persuasion can you get? They stone you and walk off saying, oh, 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 God's dead now. We got him this time. They didn't just throw little rocks at you. They didn't go out there and get them, you know, little rock we were walking over all winter long and, you know, that big around and just about curl your ankle. And just, they didn't throw them at it. I mean, they got big rocks and pushed them over a little hill and got big, big rocks and just come down on them. See, they cracked their skull. Yeah. See how many bones they could crush. And they don't Paul that way. Yeah. Just throw them at him. Yeah. They got him this time. And walk off and leave him for dead. And lo and behold, he comes crawling out of a rock pile. And when I'm persuaded that God is able to keep me, he said. Yeah. Woo! Glory to God. How many situations God brought you out of? Amen. Kept you from falling. Amen. Aren't we persuaded that he's able to keep us tonight? Yes. Right. Oh, glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. You see, it was all resting on Christ's ability. Not his ability. Not Paul's. But Christ's ability. And if there's nothing he can't do, then he can take care of my problem. If there's nothing he can't do, then that means he can take care of your problem. Right. Yes. I remember one time Sister Hester got real bad in her back, and she still got a bad back. I really don't th see how some, sometimes she does what she does. I mean, she wanted to get away for a day or two, and she wanted to 
take the trailer and go to park and, and I, I really I really want to stay home and work but she wanted to so we're doing it but but I, I couldn't be at home and, and get everything ready and I, I, I come in tonight and I had some things mind but I would have prepared to preach and just a couple hours before church find out that I'm going to be and she wants to take her bicycle I'm talking about her back she wants to take her bicycle it's in the back of the building the storage building in the back of it she goes and digs that thing out I didn't feel like Time to dig it out. Dig it out. The tires are flat. Now I'm telling you that that air compressor is not a big air compressor. That thing's heavy. I mean, it bounces against my legs and me carrying it. And she drags it out, drags it across the yard, plugs it up, blows her tires up on her bicycle, and then comes pushing it around. Hey, Amen. Uh, you know. Uh, the Lord, she still got a bad back, but God's still helping her. But she got down. There's no insurance. And we think we're going to take it into our own hands and we're going to let you sign up for disability. She goes and signs up for disability. The Lord gave her a dream before she even goes before the judge and she's not going to get it at that time and she wouldn't go back again. Amen. Now I can look back and all those years, I can see now why she didn't. Because she's always been a housewife. And I wasn't drawing mine. And so it just been SSI. And then me working. We couldn't have lived on that by itself. And, and, and God wasn't in it. So he's going to take care of her. That's what I'm trying to tell you. God's going to take care of her. God's going to help us. Am I, am, am I here all by myself? I said, God's going to help us tonight. If it's God, and we just figure it out. We'll do it this way, this way. And then God don't want it that way. I got real sick one time of migraine headaches. You've heard me tell this before. And I'm about to, about to close here in a few minutes. It's Wednesday night. You're supposed to preach this while I'm Wednesday night. But I got real bad with migraine headaches. And and uh, I was off work for three months. Wasn't able to go to work. You know, some folks, uh, I got a headache and then it's a migraine. That's still a walk in the room. Yeah. No, no. You know, migraine is going to put you in bed, friend. I got a lot of headaches. My grade put you under. I couldn't work. And again, I thought, man, if I can't work, I'm going to have to do something because this is going to run out. She's working in the factory there. I'm going to lose my job. <coughs> Supervisor. They didn't have a union backing, and, you know, I'm, I'm going to soon be out. get disability because I can't work. But I didn't want to do that. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'd like to go ahead and sit down and close this, but I'm too nervous to sit down. I can't sit down. I just can't. I don't have to work all the time, but, but I'm just too nervous to sit down. I can't handle it. i got to have something to do. But I'm just by sign up on disability. And I remember we had the end of that old building out over there trying to work it over and put the uh, place for the pulpit up, up there and build the Sunday school rooms. And we had it all tore out and we were working on it. And I'm standing over here to the side taking medication that my tongue felt like a big cotton ball every morning. And I couldn't hardly preach. Couldn't hardly function. 
just sick. They call her being sick. Standing over to the side, and I can't think of her name yet. Just a view of cold. She hardly ever done anything, Sister Kathy. And she testified it was just a few words. But when she got in, the Spirit and the Lord started moving on her. She started wringing her hands, kind of like, not real bad, but just wringing her hands like that and shaking her head and that gray hair kind of coming loose on the side. And she was getting hold of it. And she walked over to where I was standing. And she didn't do nothing but just reach and touch me just like that. <coughs> and when she did, I hit the floor. And I ain't had a migraine to this day. I've had a headache, but not a migraine. I'm telling you, God will take care of us tonight. Right. And we can have a joyful experience, right. even through a lot of troubles and trials and heartaches, because God is on our side. I hope I'm not yeah. bored you to death tonight, but I feel pretty good preaching. I really have. And I hope you got something out of this message tonight. Because God wants to help you. He wants to lift you up. He wants to help you in spite of yourself. He wants to help you in spite of what others may do. God wants to help you. Can we stand with me tonight? Stand with me. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We're not the only ones that struggles. Others struggle too. And you don't have to be ashamed of it. You don't have to be ashamed. If you're struggling over something tonight, and the devil's trying to put a doubt in your mind that God's going to help you, <coughs> tell him a liar. He's a liar. Come on down to this altar tonight. And just really get the strength that you need to stand with. Why don't you come? Because you need to. It just helps to get out and just make that step. I've made steps a few times that I thought might have been somewhat embarrassing that somebody would think I was weak. But you know, it didn't really matter because God strengthened me because I made the step. The devil's telling you tonight, you can't make it. You can make it. Fully persuaded that God will keep Come on.